So mutter paneer was my absolute favorite food growing up. And my mother would tell you, I would eat the paneer and my brother would eat the mutter. Mutter is peas and paneer is that protein that we've made. And it was true. I mean, it's as if, uh, you know, we, we each selected the elements of this delicious dish that suited us best. And to this day, I think I moved the mutter out of the way a little bit and go looking for and bobbing for the paneer. So let's get started on this absolutely luscious, creamy, tomato, onion, garlic, ginger-based um, heavenly dish called mutter paneer. We're gonna start with my Instant Pot. Now, for those of you who've never used an Instant Pot, I found that it is invaluable. It's clean, it's a one-stop shop, and it's quite fast. I see mom laboring over the stove making mutter paneer. This is a cinch compared to what mom used to do. Let's start with some ghee. I just made clarified butter yesterday. And what is ghee? Ghee is the purest form of uh, butter fat with a very high cooking point. It takes about 15 minutes to make and uh, it's um, a really worthy product. So I've got two tablespoons of ghee and to that I'm going to add some Indian spices. This is my culinary passport. This is my masala dan in which I have cumin, ground cumin, ground coriander, uh, methi or fenugreek, turmeric. This is amchur, lip smacking, uh, uh, dry mango powder and Kashmiri lal mirch, a vermilion red chili powder. So I'm going to go ahead and take a teaspoon of my uh, whole cumin. I'll take just about a quarter of a teaspoon of ground cumin. I'm going to take a healthful half teaspoon of my coriander, another healthful half teaspoon of my uh, Kashmiri lal mirch. We know turmeric has medicinal purposes, so I'm going to go ahead and put half a teaspoon of turmeric in there. Yes, it will lend a yellow color, but let's not forget that food is meant to be healthful. So in everything that we're eating, remain mindful of what each element is lending to the mix. Okay, let's go ahead and mix that up. And it smells delicious in here. I'm smelling the butter and that ghee just marrying with all those spicy spices. It's, uh, it's electric in here. I wish you could smell it with me. I'm gonna go ahead and move my uh, ground up or pureed tomatoes aside. Look what I've got going. I've got uh, one and a half chopped, medium-sized chopped onions, roughly chopped. I have three large cloves of garlic. I have about a tablespoon of ginger ready to go and just a little bit of very spicy green chili. The cilantro is there and we'll use that in a moment. Let's go ahead and put on my chopped aromatics into the mix of spices and ghee it goes. You can hear that sizzle. You want to hear that sound. You know that this ghee is waiting for uh, more guests to be part of this party. Uh, this is where your, the flavor bomb is coming from, okay? You've got all of these delicious spices that really does form the basis of North Indian cooking. Garlic, ginger, onions and tomatoes. So let's not forget the tomatoes. I'm going to take a cup of pureed tomatoes and put that right in there. And let's let those marry together well. What else am I going to do? I'm going to take a quarter cup of water. What does water do? It mitigates the potential for burn. Whenever you're working with any apparatus, the Instant Pot is no different. If things get to be too hot and sticky on the bottom of the uh, vessel, you're at risk of burning. So be very, very judicious about the use of liquid with your solids, okay? What else am I gonna do? I'm gonna put something absolutely gorgeous in the mix. Let me show you. I have a muslin or cheesecloth bag in which I've placed whole spices. So they're not ground up. And what is this? This is basically gutta masala in its infancy. I have bay leaves, I have black pepper, I have cinnamon stick, cloves, green cardamom, and black cardamom. And these six spices are going to come together in this bag and bathe this mixture and provide another uh, warm, aromatic, heavenly source of, of color and flavor. All of those dark spices, cloves and cinnamon, doesn't that remind you of Thanksgiving? Well, it's going to be a little bit of Thanksgiving in our pot today, okay? We can't forget salt. Have to be careful about the use of sodium. 
but I'm going to go ahead and put about a uh, half a teaspoon of salt in there, okay? Let's mix that up. To recap, what do we have going? We've got that muslin bag full of beautiful whole spices, onions, garlic, ginger, tomato, um, Kashmiri lal mirch, and uh, turmeric, coriander, and cumin. We're going to go ahead and put the Instant Pot on. That valve needs to be pointing away from me. The floating valve is down as it should be. It says on. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it out of its saute function. Put the pressure cooker on for eight minutes. And when this baby is ready, we're going to uh, immersion blend it, add a little bit of cream, honey, some peas, and that beautiful paneer, and make my childhood favorite mutter paneer. Don't go away. All right, let's do the big reveal. We're gonna go ahead and open the Instant Pot. The floating valve is down. That tells us it's safe to do so. Let's go ahead and lift the lid and look inside. I'm just gonna let the aroma envelop my kitchen. It's absolutely gorgeous in here right now. And look at that gorgeous color. There's a beautiful reddish orange and look at all the onions dancing through there. The, the flavors that have been amassed in this pot over the eight minutes that it cooked can only be described for my vision as spot on, but we're gonna taste it as well. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and liberate this, uh, the aromatic uh, package that we need. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way. And next I'm going to take an immersion blender. Um, Always be careful when working with an immersion blender. You do not want things to come spraying up at you. I'm gonna go ahead and hold this hot pot with a towel for obvious reasons. And let's go ahead and get this going. And so basically we're gonna make a beautiful puree out of this tomato-based sauce. So beautiful. And I really like that consistency. Some of you are going to say, boy, that looks like that ragu. I assure you, it doesn't taste quite like ragu, but that's sort of its uh, consistency at this point. I'm going to go ahead and lay down my immersion blender. What else is going to go on in here? I'm going to go ahead and press the saute function. I'm about to kick this up to a heavenly notch with some uh, ground up cashews. And that's about a quarter of a cup of cashews ground. What does that do? Any vegan would tell you that the key to a creamy dish without the cream is some ground up nuts, be they almonds or cashews. And cashews are so sweet. These are simply raw cashews that I got at the Indian store that I, um, I didn't roast or salt. All I did was add, uh, uh, add them to the blender, mix them up, made that ground up uh, beautiful uh, cashew puree. I'm also going to add some cream. I realize that takes the vegan element out of this. So for those of you who are watching and say, you know, Abba, I'd prefer to keep this vegan. You can omit the ghee in the beginning and just add oil, right? Canola, vegetable, grape seed, olive oil, whatever you like to cook with. And in lieu of the heavy whipping cream, you could simply add um, some coconut cream, okay? So there are always alternatives and you can still indulge in this mutter paneer. It's absolutely a perfect color. It reminds me of mom. So I know that I'm getting there. So here we have this creamy basis. What else am I gonna add? This is an ingredient that I can't uh, revel in enough. This is fenugreek and they're fenugreek leaves. And the aroma that the fenugreek leaf uh, imparts um, is best described as exotic. It's as if you're meeting uh, an Indian in Rajasthan for the first time. It's so exotic. It's absolutely a decadent flavor. And it is an absolute marriage of two ideals when you add fenugreek to this mutter paneer curry or sauce, okay? So I put about two tablespoons in there. You can be more generous if you like. But we're gonna go ahead and mix this up. I've just kicked the aroma up to another heavenly level. It smells incredible in here and it's gonna taste even better, I can assure you. So what do I need to do? I'm gonna taste it first uh, before I add anything else to it. Where do I begin? I feel I'm greeted with that tomato, garlic, onion, ginger welcome. 
and then I felt spices popping in my mouth. I feel it everywhere. It truly is fireworks going on in here. I'm not gonna add any honey. There is no need to sweeten an already perfectly balanced curry. I'm gonna take my peas, because mutter paneer, of course, has to have some peas in it. So I'm gonna add two cups of peas to this, okay? These were frozen peas that I bought at my favorite Indian store, and I went ahead and soaked them, because you don't want frozen peas, you want them to be softened. And let's go ahead and put this in my prepared vessel. And look what I forgot to do. I'm gonna grab my towel. Remember what I said about burning yourself. Let's go ahead and put this right in here. And what else am I gonna do? What's the other major duo in mutter paneer? We can't let the paneer uh, be left to the wayside. It's just as important as the mutter. And as a child, I would have told you the paneer is more important than the mutter. We're all allowed to have a vote, right? So my vote is let's get that paneer bathing right into this mixture. So come on over, take a look. That beautiful paneer we made, we cubed, we put uh, off to the side, waiting for the, uh, the curry to invite us back in. Let's mix this up. Look at how gorgeous that is. This is my childhood in a bowl. And I'm gonna garnish it, as my mother taught me how, with fresh cilantro. Indians love their cilantro, and it is the finishing touch of any dish. You know you're ready to serve it um, on your dining table when you've garnished your dish with cilantro. I'm gonna tantalize you further with some naan. I have some fresh naan that I have uh, uh, put on the griddle with some fresh butter. I adorned it with some more cilantro and black sesame seeds. I also have a second kind of bread, so let's sit down and enjoy this Indian feast.